Springboks take the second game to keep the series alive. 27 points to 9. Excuse my voice, I've got a bit of something that I picked up from my children, but I've just watched Game 2 in the 2021 Lions Tour. 27 points to 9. I got a wish. My wish was that this game would go down to a deciding third test. That's what we're going to get. I honestly saw some parallels in the first game with this game, just the roles being a wee bit reversed. Uh, I'm speaking about some guys struggling under the high ball, some poor discipline, and um, yeah, it's just a bit of a turnaround at half time. But anyway, we'll go through the key events of the game, some of the stats. Hopefully, my voice will hold up for another kind of 10 minutes or so. And um, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one played out. Uh, I will still reiterate the pitch at that ground is terrible. It absolutely sucks. I can't believe that we're going to see such an important game played at such a terrible ground. That's, that pitch is absolutely not suitable for rugby. Uh, the amount of slips and tearing up of the ground is pretty horrendous. And I should say this was a long game. It was a very long. I don't mean that in terms of anything else other than the, the, the amount of time it took to play this game was very long. Uh, it would have to be one of the longest games I've ever seen just because the amount of stoppages and whatnot meant meant that it, it took a very long time to come to a conclusion. Uh, it certainly wasn't the prettiest game by anyone's standards, but it had that intensity which you expect from a test match. Didn't quite have any drama at the end because the scoreline in the end is actually kind of a, a pretty comfortable one for the Springboks. Um, there's certainly a lot of intensity. Uh, the game starts with handbags, pushing and shoving. Uh, pretty early on, within about the first minute, you've got Alan Wynne jones and Eben Elizabeth kind of yanking each other by the collars. Um, probably just, you know, talking about their hobbies and whatnot. Um, getting up close and personal anyway. I don't know what they were talking about, maybe gardening. Um, but either way, uh, Ben O'Keefe, the ref, who's under a lot of pressure for this game, uh, he calls both the captains of uh, Sio Kulisi and Alan Wynne jones basically says to them both, I don't want any of this kind of guys running in after and not not. And if they're going to do that, they're going to get yellow carded. And we do see yellow cards later on, but not really for that purpose. Uh, Peter Steph Dutoy gets dumped on his side pretty early on by Duan van der Merwe. Um, and actually, he ends up going off pretty early in this game injured. So he'll be a bit of an injury concern going into game number three. Although in the scheme of things, some other guys kind of stepped up to fall, to fill that role of his, which is, you know, that high work rate, high tackle intensity playing kind of role. But either way, the uh, the first penalty went South Africa's way and they kicked it to make it three points to nil. LaRue knocked on a high ball on about seven minutes, which was a bit concerning because that's one of the areas the Springboks really struggled last week was that high ball. And um, I think this was a bigger up and under and it was bigger and the... Um, Farrell as well when he came on last week and, uh, you know, the box kicks that were really putting the spring box guys under pressure. So this was a little bit of a disconcerting one. It was kind of memories of last week. Uh, it eventually led to a um, a penalty, actually. Visa got penalized for a no-arms tackle and uh, the Lions guys equaled the score to make it three points apiece. They opted for three. Uh, Colby smashed his face into Tom Curry's face, which was not the smartest thing to do. Um, usually it's tall guys smashing their face into tall guys or shorter guys, but Colby smashed his face into Tom Curry, uh, on 16 minutes. He had a bit of a bloody nose, high tackle for that one, penalized six points to three. The Lions go in front with a penalty there. Um, but on 18 minutes, uh, the box got one pretty much straight back. It was a long shot for Pollard, 42 minutes, but he missed it. And again, I'm thinking... High ball being missed, Pollard missing some goal kicks. I'm getting kind of inklings from, you know, from the from last week's game. It's seemingly a little bit familiar. Peter Steph goes off, as I mentioned, Quaker Smith comes on. Quaker Smith's a guy who got a bit of stick last week for his performance. You know, they, they put him under a lot of pressure to the Lions. So at that point in the game, Lions are on front of the scoreboard. I was thinking... This one, at that, at that point in the game anyway, is maybe advantage to the Lions. Uh, 22 minutes. Um, Duan van der Merwe, though, has an absolute brain explosion. I don't know what he was thinking. Someone in the stream mentioned that's one way to stop Cheslin Colby going around you is to kick him. He, he tripped him up. Cheslin Colby had the ball. Uh, to be fair, he had just picked it up off the ground, so you could 
loosely argue that Duan is trying to kick the ball on the ground, but he's about a second or two too late. And uh, he ends up just kicking Colby in the leg. So Colby gets tripped over and it's a yellow card. It's the right call. Officiating team picks that one up. Um, South Africa, from that penalty, I guess they want to take a... It a, would have been a pretty bloody hard kick. So they opt for touch, but they lose the line out. So again, I'm thinking, man, you guys have just stopped the Lions' momentum. You're able to get yourself into the game and then you miss the line out, which is kind of... You know, if you think of that South African Rugby World Cup winning side, they virtually didn't lose any lineups and they lost one or two like the whole tournament. So uncharacteristic. Um, and then on 24 minutes, it kind of doubles down. A bit of bad news for the Springbox in that Cheslin Colby takes out um, Connor Murray in the air and there's handbags again. More pushing and shoving this time. It's even it's a bit of Murray. Toja has the locks all getting into it. Um, Murray's up taking the high ball. Colby's got his eyes on the ball, but he's... Um, not in the, the the higher position to catch anyway. He's kind of on the ground. Murray's in the air. Uh, and he ends up taking out Murray. Murray lands. He kind of lands for mine on his body with the ball under him. And then kind of face plants into the ground. Um, so it's a yellow card for Colby. I will see people saying it could have been red. Um, but... He didn't land directly on his head, at least from the, the replays that I was watching. Um, yeah, so it's it's a yellow for Colby. And um, yeah, it's 14 on 14. The weirdest thing about that was the ref, Ben O'Keefe, said he landed on his back. Now, I could understand if people said he landed on his head or his chest or his arms or the ball. The one place I don't think he landed was his back. But anyway, uh, it's a yellow card. And um, as for the referee's warning about if anyone runs in for a bit of afters for pushing and shoving, he's going to yellow card them. That doesn't eventuate, but the ref does have another talking to to the players. So, um, yeah, the intensity is still pretty high. And uh, we've seen more cards in this game than we did last week, for sure, because there was nothing doing last week in terms of cards. Um, the box did manage to shut down the Lions attack relatively uh, well, but then they lost their own line out again. So the Springboks missed two line outs pretty early. Um, but they did get a penalty, and it was a soft one, some bad decision-making with the Lions, I felt. Hogg tried to kind of do a stepping, jinking move on 31 minutes, and uh, obviously he got turned over. It wasn't really the game for it. Uh, maybe it's partly the pitch, because the guys slip over so much, but yeah. Um, Pollard slots the penalty to make it six points apiece. Interesting move from the Lions on 33 minutes, though, because Duan van der Merwe comes on. He's back from his yellow card. Colby's still got about one minute in the bin. They get a penalty, so they opt for touch, maybe trying to exert the pressure of that extra man. Um, but then South Africa steal the line out. So neither side's having like that much success with their line out at this point in the game. Um, I mean, to get the Lions a bit of pay back, they, they do drive Evan Etzebeth, who ends up with the ball. I think it's Moster who steals the line out. Etzebeth gets the ball. Tojo drives... Even it's breath back into his own in-goal area, so it's a five-meter scrum for the Lions, but it's like whatever they had planned has just gone out the window, so they've got to go to plan B. Um, plan B, I guess, does almost eventuate in a try. Henshaw ends up going over the line. Um, but he looks like he's dropped it over the line, and the ref says it's an on-field no try because he kind of sees the ball bobble out at the end. And for mine, it's one of those ones where if it's an on-field try, you probably give it because there's maybe a blade of grass touching the ball, but there is, I think it's Henshaw's own hand under the ball. So you can't see a clear and obvious grounding. And then he does lose the ball. It's Khaleesi with a big old try-saving tackle there. So they check it and uh, there's nothing doing there. They also do check a, uh, a Fafta Klerk for a, um, a no-arms tackle. He takes only a really quick look at it. Um, the angle that they showed on the replay didn't look too bad. Um, he just kind of came in with a shoulder on shoulder, at least from the one time they replayed it. Um, so, yeah, they kind of checked that one as all good, but they do go back for a penalty. So it's nine points to six. The Lions are in front. Um, and, yeah, that's pretty much how it is at halftime. So you're looking at half time. Lions are in front by three. They've had more position, 60%. More territory, 61%. Um, they've got a 100% tackle rate, 52 from 52. The Springboks have had to make 90 tackles in, in 40 minutes. Well, it's a long 40 minutes. It's probably an hour. Um, but they're still at 96%. The Springboks are really high tackling. So it's a matter for the defenses. The Springboks have conceded more penalties. 
But it was kind of a similar story last week, right, for the for the Springboks. The Springboks had a better first half. They had more possession, more territory from memory. They had fewer penalties conceded. Um, yeah, so it flips on its head, just like last week. Uh, Mapimpi gets the first try of the game. If you were thinking, man, that first half was a hard watch, thing of beauty try for the Mapimpi one. That one was... Um, it kind of all started with the Lions conceding a scrum penalty, and I think it's partly due to the pitch, man. Their footing goes out from under them. Furlong gets penalised um, for, for conceding the scrum penalty. Uh, they end up having a line out the spring box. They maul it. The maul um, gets them some kind of, you know, some real good field position. They go up the pitch, and the spring box maul was looking pretty good this week, much like the Lions one was getting some pay last week. And um, Pollard, I think, just pumps the ball once to get Watson on his wing to bite in a little bit. And then he puts the cross kick in from the pimp and pimp. He's got that little bit of extra space. Watson and Hogg and um, I think it's Conan can't can't get near Mpimpy, man. Mpimpy is such a lethal finisher. They do miss the conversion though, so it's only 11 points to nine. I say only, but they're back in front. Visa knocks on from the restart, so not the best restart for the Springboks having just gone in front. Um, and the Lions get a chance eventually to kick a penalty, but they miss it. It hits the post and doesn't go in. So unlucky miss for, for Bigger on that one. And they pay the price, man, because down the other end, Lukanyo Am, who's had a great game as well, uh, on 61 minutes, he gets another try. That one is, um, it's again, it's from a big Springboks mall, which is just getting so much pay for them. And then uh, Faf de Klerk puts through a nice little grubber. They check the grounding of it about a million times. I saw it the first time I thought, looks like he's grounded it. They looked at it again and again and again to make sure there's no kind of separation. For mine, it was a good try. Um, yeah, I think someone who was watching the, the eye of the South African feed here, someone who was watching the um, the Sky Sports feed said that Nigel Owens thought he'd lost control of it, but I, I, thought, he would, I thought he'd controlled it well enough to score a try. It's again, one of those ones on field try it's probably a try, man. It's going to be pretty hard to overturn that one. So, uh, yeah, 18 points to nine. And now the Springboks are looking like, in this game, like pretty comfortable. Like that's, that, that, that's a big lead. This is not a game where you're going to quickly score a couple of tries to come back. Lions didn't make their, matters, make their job any easier. Dumb penalties, man. Similar to the Springboks last week. Sometimes poor discipline costing you. Uh, in at the side of the mall, driving early at the line out, like when Antipeth's jumped up. Yeah, the, the Lions drive in before he's hit the ground. Like, just, yeah, silly penalties. I know the Springboks Mall was causing them so much trouble. So they're conceding penalties, trying to stop it, but doing it illegally is not helping their cause. Um, Pollard gets a... Oh, I should have mentioned, uh, the second Springbok try all comes from, I think, Watson taking out Pollard in the air as well. So it's kind of like, that was back in Springbok territory. That gives them the field position, and then that sets up the mall. So it's kind of like an initial dumb penalty is punished with a try went on the other end. But yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So um, yeah, struggle with the high ball, the Lions, man. They um, they kept dropping it. Hogg didn't have a good day under the high ball. Watson didn't have a good day under the high ball. Uh, another penalty for the, uh, the Springboks, 21-9. And then the huge Springboks scrum, man. The bomb squad did its job this week. Inyakani was a proper monster off the bench. Uh, another penalty, 24-9. Um, TMO had a look at some foul play towards the end of the game, but there was nothing really doing. I think that was... Oh God, I can't even remember now who they were looking at. It was um for one. Uh, for one tackle, but nothing much doing. And then uh, one last penalty towards the death. So it finishes 27 points to nine. The Lions can't score any points in the second half. Um, the penalty count kind of blows out. It ends up 15-10. to 10. So remember, like last week... The team who had conceded the most penalties in the first half is much better in the second half. The Springboks only conceded one penalty in that second half, whereas you know the, the, the Lions go from six at halftime to 15 by full time. So you can't keep doing that. Run meters in this game is 138 to 112, so pretty low. Pretty low in terms of ball in hand. Uh, the kick count is like 40, 40, so 44, 29. So a lot of kicks from the Springboks. It's kind of the same same, same from last week. A lot of kicking in this game. Um, but again, the pitch is kind of conducive to not wanting to play with the ball because it's just so easy to slip over. Uh, position finishes 50-50. Territory 49-51. So pretty even after being 
lopsided in the first half. So the Springboks even up the numbers by dominating the second half in that territory. Um, knock-ons, again, like last week. Last week, the Springboks, I think, had almost double the knock-ons of the of the Lions. This week, it's knock-ons 11-4 to four with the Lions having more. You just can't do that and be and be wanting to win a game, man. Um, the Lions missed three of their own lineouts. Ken Owens has a few go astray in the second half. Uh, Marco Vunipolo, I don't think, had the same impact he did last week when he was starting. Some people kind of called that out, that he, he won't be able to have that same kind of dominance that he did when he starts is when he comes off from the bench. I think that was true. Um, yeah, the box tackle at 91%, the Lions tackle at 94%, so very much a game for the defences. But as I mentioned, um, Hogg, two turnovers conceded. Watson, three, no, three turnovers conceded. Henshaw, three turnovers conceded. Just too much of that, man. Uh, and the Springboks guys, Khaleesi, on screen they had him at 100% tackles. I don't know which... Um, stats Supersport used, but um, Opta's got Khaleesi at 14 from 15 uh, and 22 run meters, which in this game, 22 run meters makes him like the second highest spring block and I think the third highest overall. Like, nobody was getting many run meters in this game, so 22 in the scheme of things is quite high. Um, LaRue had 23. He's the highest spring block. Remember, as fullback, he gets a lot easier ones than Khaleesi is going to get. Uh, Alan Wynn Jones makes 14 out of 14 tackles. Henshaw is the number one run meter guy for the whole game with 27. So, yeah, not everyone will have enjoyed that game in terms of the way it was played. Like, you know, not being a real flashy running game. But as I mentioned, the pitch is not the easiest to play on. Um, and it was just kind of that high intensity game where both sides are looking to kick position. They're looking to play territory. They are um, trying to play it relatively safe. We did see a couple of bloody good tries. Henshaw's one was as close as it's going to get without being a try, so he could have had another one. But, um, yeah. Game three, folks. We will get game three. I'm very happy for that. It will be interesting to see if Warren Gatlin decides to ring the changes because, yeah, the expectation that maybe if you could kick, kick into the Springboks' hands and they would make the same errors didn't prove to be the case like last week, and it was actually kind of the reverse. But anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts. Hopefully we get some kind of positive vibes in the in the next seven days until game three. Probably not, but I'm sending out the positive vibes in the fact that we are going to get game three. It's all to play for in that third test. That's a magnificent thing for at least me as a neutral and a rugby fan to be setting up for a third game i will look forward to watching the kind of press conferences and whatnot to see what they've got to say but um yeah man um i forgot to mention the kind of arm my pimpy uh and you can malcolm marx all had a huge impact from the bench we didn't really see the same from the lions so i reckon it's kind of a uh a turnaround from last week similar story but with the opposite result you guys have many thoughts. I'm going to go rest my voice for a while, have some brekkie. Uh, it is now 6.50, been up since 3.40. So, um, yeah, you guys take care of yourselves. Let me know your thoughts on the game. And um, I'll talk to you again soon. It's better.